eight here for another important course unit still in the nursing world this time round we are going to look at uh, a microbiology as a course unit and I must appreciate that uh, this time round under microbiology I believe we have been discussing a lot of different concepts in the group but uh, today we want us to, we want to look at uh, some specific thing one different thing let us look, today we are going to look at uh, what we call immunity immunity uh, we are going to look at uh, immunity immunity immunization 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 and vaccines this is an important part in microbiology and uh, you must believe that uh, that uh, that uh, volume volume down we might you must believe that uh, that uh, with with this concept with this concept uh, it is very vital when you are at the hospital so it, uh, we must put our minds that uh, paper 3 is where we have uh, we have, is where we have uh, microbiology that's paper 3 and uh, under paper 3 we have uh, microbiology plus uh, pch where we know that uh, microbiology carries almost almost uh, 40 percent and uh, pch carries 60 percent we know that pch is quite very simple that is for the nurses and uh, if for the for the comprehensors they stroke something or is it uh, either psychology uh, I believe they know. Uh, right now, we are going to look at immunity. When someone talks of immunity, what is immunity? Immunity is the body's ability to fight or resist infections, or what we call diseases. That is what we call immunity. So, when someone talks of immunization, we are going to find out what is immunization. When someone talks of vaccines, we are going to find out what are vaccines. Allow me straight away start start with the uh, with the classification of immunity. Immunity. Let us go through what we call immunity alone. And you must appreciate that there is a question. Uh, let us put it here. Our guiding question. Discuss, 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 or describe, or describe, describe the classification. Classification. Describe the classification of immunity. This question can be given twenty-five marks. How we, how do we go about it? Here we go. We have, having known that uh, immunity is uh, the body's ability to fight diseases. Let us now know. Let us now know how does that system work we must know that uh, immunity works with uh, what we call immune system of the body and the immune system is a network of cells and the chemicals that work together to produce antibodies that could fight diseases yeah look at this you must appreciate that our uh, immunity is uh, divided in two major two types immunity is divided in major two Types that is what we call the non specific, the non specific, and what we call the specific, the specific immunity. When someone talks of non specific, what does it what does he mean? Non specific immunity is that type of immunity where there is use of natural mechanism where the body itself fights against diseases. It's what we call a non-specific immunity. This is what we call non-specific immunity. It is where the body uses natural mechanisms to fight against diseases. And these mechanisms are seen that they are divided in majorly two classes. They are what we call the physical, the physical mechanisms. And what we call the chemical mechanisms. With the physical, with the physical. They can also be called the mechanical. Before I proceed, let us first come back here. All of you have been knowing that uh, 
mentally the types of immunity are natural and artificial. Right, they are, but they are not applicable here for such a question or for for an advanced health worker. You must start that uh, immunity is divided into non-specific and specific. And uh, another name for non-specific is what we call actually actually it is what we call uh, for non-specific. Uh, we can call it. Uh, uh, let, let me first give this for specific. You must know for specific. It can also be called the memory. Memory immunity. This type of specific immunity it has the ability to ability of the body to memorize or keep or keep some 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 information to be used in the further use. Now, while well, for non-specific immunity. For non-specific immunity, remember this is uh, this this type of immunity is also called adaptive skill. It's called adaptive immunity. That is the specific type of immunity. For reference, for reference, I always want you to go and uh, look at. Uh, there is a book called. Uh, uh, there is a book called uh, Anatomy and the Physiology. This book, Anatomy and the Physiology. Uh, for any fashion you look at, go and look for look for resistance and immunity. That is where I want you guys to go and look for everything you're going to discuss is in this book. So let me proceed. Let me proceed. I was still telling you that specific is also given another name as as memory or adaptive or adaptive. That is, those are the other names of specific. While for non-specific, it is given another name as the innate, innate type of immunity. So, with the innate type of immunity or the non-specific, I told you to say we use the natural mechanisms to fight against diseases. You must appreciate that uh, they use two mechanisms. That is the physical, stroke, mechanical, or chemical. Let us look at uh, what we call physical. Physical. With the physical mechanisms of, of fighting diseases, it is where we shall see, first of all, the skin. Yeah, the skin. <laughs> you know, whenever I discuss these things, I feel so happy. These things are, are very, very funny. Yeah? Uh, skin. Physically, we shall see the skin protecting the underlying surfaces. Are you together? From damage. We shall see the outer skin, which consists of uh, the melamine, protecting the underlying surfaces. Are we together? So, if I further proceed, still the skin, before I proceed to any other physical mechanism, after protecting the underlying surfaces, yeah, still the skin consists of the nomophrola, the staphylococcus, the staphylococcus, there are very many types of nomophrola found on the skin. All together. So the skin consists of the normal flora, which actually create a competition for food on the skin. Therefore, the harmful bacteria will lack what to eat. Therefore, will run away from the body, hence not causing the disease. Or they will occupy the space which would have been for the harmful bacteria. You see, these things are very fun and very easy. Now, still, the skin has what we call the sebaceous gland. Now, this sebaceous gland produces oil. And it keeps the body moist. And once the body is moist, it will not actually get any mechanical damage. That is one way how the skin acts as a physical mechanism. Let me proceed to what we call the mucus, the mucus membrane. Now, when I look at the mucus membrane, it is found in the in, in the nose. This mucus membrane is responsible for producing for us what we call dirt mucus found in the nose. And the mucus is responsible for trapping any dust that would go into the respiratory tract system. There are very many other physical mechanisms. But uh, we, I want to give a clue so that you, re you remember everything. That is the aim of these discussions. Let me look at now the chemical. Now with the chemical, we shall start this. The body has got chemicals in it that help to fight diseases. Remember I told you, innate or non-specific immunity, it's that type of meter where there is use of natural mechanisms alone. 
You will not see anything called the antibody. You will not see anything called the uh, antigen in this type of immunity. I think I've not talked about it at any step. Let us look at chemical. With the chemical, it is so funny that with the chemical, there's what we call hydrochloric acid in the body. You all know that by, by this stage. As they, you know, I have a tutor of mine who usually tells me that uh, by the time you will actually, you will actually finish, finish the first semester, you will be better than your secondary and your primary teachers in what we call science life. Eh, so, when, when I'm discussing, I remember that concept. I feel right now I'm better than them, though so they are still my mentors. If I proceed, the hydrochloric acid is found in the, in the stomach. And I, I think I talked about the stages uh, which are seen as we produce this hydrochloric acid. Because we know that uh, it is sweated by, product, it's sweated by the, the gastric juice, which gastric juice is produced by the parietal cells that is seen in digestion. Eh? So this one gives any microorganism that enters in the food. All right, together. I want you guys to co comment with questions, comment with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with any question where you have not understood, they read it for me, I will explain more as we proceed. So, after, after understanding that this hydrochloric acid is in the stomach, it will kill any food that enters into the body, hence preventing you from getting diseases. Let us look at the tear gland. The tear gland. Now for the tear gland. It is so funny that for the tear gland, it consists of what we call lysosomes. The tear gland consists of what we call lysosomes. Now, these lysosomes have got chemicals in them. We know that uh, in, in the cell, there's a part we call lysosomes in the cell. That's possible for actually fighting, uh, fighting any damage to the cell. So it is the same in the tears. We have got what we call lysosomes. These lysosomes consist of chemicals that will kill any microorganisms that will attack the eye. Let us look at uh, what we call what we call the lactic acid. The lactic acid. Now, this lactic acid, this lactic acid is found in the vaginal canal of ladies. Eh? It's also possible for produce actually fighting diseases. Remember, we know that uh, the reproductive system of ladies is exposed to the external environment. Not for a need for something to fight any microorganisms, because we know that microorganisms are found everywhere in the environment. Are we together? Now, having discussed. What we, what we call innate or non-specific. I believe you guys now have remembered everything. And I believe these are simple things right now. Allow me to rub this first part of immunity off. So that I get space. We remember the topic we are handling is immunity, immunization, and the vaccines. Let me proceed now to what we call specific immunity. Or what we call the memory immunity. Or what we call the adaptive immunity. Three names. Science is so fun. If I proceed, this is the type of immunity. Specific, memory, or adaptive. This type of immunity where there is use of both antigen and antibodies in fighting against diseases. But you realize that this type of immunity further broadens up and you, I need you to be so attentive to this type of immunity. This type of immunity is first of all divided into two classes. Where we have what we call the cero mediated. Mediated. And what we call the homoro. Homoro. The cero mediated, or what we call the cell controlled immunity, is that type of immunity where we shall see the cell. Working by its own in order to fight diseases. How does this work? How does this cell mediated immunity work? Look at this. Remember in the lymphatic system. As I was discussing the lymphatic system, it was one of the topics I discussed. I think by the time the president locked up the country for the second lockdown, the following day, we discussed the lymphatic system still on Facebook Live. Just to go to the group discussions of Martin Mulo, you will see it. Remember, I told you uh, under tissues of the lymphatic system, we have what we call the body marrow. So the body marrow are responsible for producing for us what we call the lymphocytes. Yeah? Lymphocytes.
lymphocytes. Now, these are lymphocytes produced by the bony marrow. By the bony marrow. The lymphocytes produced by the bony marrow are very, very important. How? They help us, first of all, having the lymphocytes in the body, they will stimulate the production of what you call the T cells. These T cells will help us to stimulate the production of what we call, what you call the beta yeah. cells. Now, most of you have ever heard of these beta <coughs> cells in blood, right? Now, these beta cells we produce for us what we call the anti bodies. How does this thing work? Having seen the lymphocytes in the body marrow, helping us produce the T cells, we must put it at the back of our mind that the T cells are two in a number. We have what we call the T4 and the T8. Yeah, T4 and T8. Now, both these T4 and T8 have, have, actually, have got important functions. T4 are what we call the helper cells. Helper. Helper cells. T8 are what you call the compressors. The compressor cells. You must appreciate that these T cells will support the production of beta cells. And then antibodies. Take a scenario. How does the cell mediated type of immunity work? Now, this is our body. We shall see the T4 here, the T8 here. Now, here comes Mr. Bacteria invading the body. When it comes, what the T4 will do? They will wait for it to get nearer and they will come and engulf it. The T4 the helper cells will come and engulf this bacteria. Then it bring these antibodies that are produced by the beta cells and they kill this bacteria. In the process of killing or carrying out the destruction of this bacteria, the, the T8 will come and suppress the reaction or compress the reaction so that it does not cause harm to the body. All together, that is how the cell mediated type of immunity works. Have you seen me talking about anything like antibody? It is the cells alone working. Hope you guys have understood everything with the cell mediated type of immunity. Allow me further proceed and actually look at a homolo. Homolo. Remember, I say zero mediated. Let us now look. See homolo. Homolo type of immunity. Now. These things are when you look at the anatomy book where we, under the topic of resistance and immunity, these things are not classified, but they are put in general. So what I've done here, I've tried to classify them to make these things easier. Allow me to bring this humor here to your view properly. And I rub off this so that it does not cause any destruction. Because you know that, uh, that uh, we have now, above we have the adaptive, Stock specific, stock memory. The reason that's why we, we call it memory. We are going to see that. Now, after that, we saw zero mediated properly. Now, we are seeing it homoro. Now, with the homoro type of immunity, it is where there is use of both antigen and antibody in fighting the disease. How does this come about? Look at this. Homolo type of immunity is actually divided, first of all, into further motor classes. That is what we call the active and what we call the passive. Passive. Now, this, these are the other types of immunity I've always been yapping about. They are here. We proceed with the active immunity. With the active immunity. It's that type of immunity where there is you, actually, where the body manufactures its own antibodies to fight against diseases. The body will always make its own antibodies. While with the passive, the body will use already made antibodies. Already made antibodies. So, 
you realize that with the active immunity, it is also further divided into other two classes. Active immunity plus even, even passive is also further divided into further two classes. You must appreciate that uh, active is first of all divided into natural and artificial. Still the same with passive, natural and artificial. Are we together? Now we get the name natural active immunity. Natural after now, artificial active immunity. Natural passive immunity. Artificial passive immunity. These are, these are types of immunity you have always been seeing. How are they defined? What are they? What are their uses? What, how are these? How does, now we know how they have come about. What are they? Natural active immunity. Having seen that in active, so the body makes its own body. With the natural active immunity, it's why a body first suffers. What does what does this mean? Take a scenario. You suffer from what we call malaria right now. Of course, I'm going to get time. Probably I come and I discuss how malaria gets into the body, how it's how it how it can be prevented, and how we can go about with malaria. Take a scenario. Take a scenario that uh, that uh, that uh, you suffer from malaria. Having somebody from malaria, the body, we, after you taking drugs, and and actually these drugs will just make the production of antibodies hmm, all together. Now the body will keep after you getting better. The remaining antibodies after you becoming a uh, becoming a uh, negative of malaria and uh, the, those remaining antibodies are kept in the body that is actually having kept those antibodies it is what we call the memory immunity so what I want to explain this natural active immunity you have somebody from malaria now you get medicine after getting the medicines you get better but the antibodies that have remained as you get better they will be kept that time to come in the future you will suffer from malaria again therefore these antibodies will now fight the disease without you even taking any other any other medicines all right, together that is what we mean with natural active let us look at artificial active immunity now with artificial active immunity you realize that it is where we use it vaccines it is the one they gave you when you are still baby when you are a baby you are given uh, different vaccines uh, you were given vaccines against uh, immunizable diseases. Uh, I remember when we were still young, the moment you are given birth to, you had to get some vaccine there. We are going to see that under immunization in Shelly. Uh, so, under immunization in Shelly, you already see what type of vaccine you are supposed to get at what, at what period of time. So, these vaccines, these vaccines, which you were given actually when you are still young, the polio vaccine, the BCG, DPT, produced antibodies in the body that are fighting those diseases even up to now until you die. Are you together? Let us look at now passive. The way you hear the word passive, it is just passed on. Now, with the natural passive immunity, what is naturally passed on? It is the breast meaning. So it's where we shall see breast feeding. Breastfeeding. Actually, after after explaining all this, I'm going to, to pre actually, prepare a, a PDF which I'll put in the WhatsApp groups. Also, uh, put some pictures in the in the Facebook group so that you actually get to as you listen to the audio, you you, you see the flow. Are right, together? So, it is where we use natural passive. It is breastfeeding. That is why when you are a, a young kid. You were breastfed so that uh, your body is boosted so that you don't get diseases. Even up to now, you still have that immunity. Let us look at what we call the artificial passive immunity. This one is like somehow challenging. That uh, it is where we shall see that the body will always receive already made antibodies, already made, already made antibodies. I see me there. Now, with the already many antibodies under artificial passivity, how do we get those antibodies? 
For example, we usually use uh, we sh we usually get serums from different animals. What do we do? For example, we shall use a horse because we believe that we animals who are given ability by God to fight against diseases by themselves. What do we do? If a person is suffering from measles, we can get that measles and inject it in, in a horse. It suffers from it, then it will produce antibodies and it gets healed. The remaining antibodies in it shall be picked, checked in the laboratory, then given to a person suffering from measles. You get? That is how it works. I believe I've explained immunity from top to bottom. Just to summarize down what I've talked about. Yeah? Just to summarize down what I talked about. Uh, we said immunity is uh, divided into what we call innate stock, none specific stock. That is, that is it. Then we have adaptive stock, specific stock, memory. And I further proceeded and I said with with the uh, with the uh, innate it is where we use natural mechanism like physical and the chemical. I said under physical, under physical, we have the skin. How does the skin do it? Presence of normal flora, protecting underlying surfaces, it's having a sebaceous gland. We have the mucous membrane under physical. That is what we can see. Under chemical, we have the HCL. We have the TR, Gnal, having we have the lactic acid. That is what is seen under innate. If I proceed and I look at, at uh, adaptive, we, shall, we have what we call the cello mediated and what we call the hormonal. Under cello mediated, we shall appreciate that we shall see the cells working by themselves. We shall have the lymphocyte producing for us T cells, which T cells are T4 which are the same as helper and the T8. We have what we call the beta cells produced by the T4 cells, which beta cells produce for us anti antibodies. Antibody. So phagocytosis is activated, will take place. Let us look at homoro. With the homoro, you will appreciate that uh, with homoro, we have what we call the active, active and the passive. Active and the, active and the passive. Now, here we are, active and passive. So, under active, this is under passive. So, under active, we must appreciate that uh, we have what we call the natural active immunity and what we call the artificial active immunity. We also have what we call the natural passive immunity. also have what we call the artificial passive immunity. That is, we see Hannah or Moro. So, when I said natural active means a person has to suffer, right? Here, under active, active, actually, under active artificial, uh, we shall see that uh, a person is given vaccines, right? Now, under, under passive, under passive, we shall see that a person here is breast frail, it is breastfeeding here. Under, under actually, under artificial passive, a person is given already made, already made antibodies. But what could be the advantages of this? Yeah, and disadvantages. When I talk of uh, the advantages of, uh, of uh, natural active immunity, when a person has suffered, so the advantage is, after you suffering, the, the, the antibodies produced are longer lasting. So the advantage is, advantage here is longer longer lasting here the advantage is longer lasting as an advantage as a disadvantage you realize that uh, a person has to suffer you suffer from a disease at times you can die are we together so with the active artificial immunity here what are the advantages of vaccines long lasting because you even have them up to now it is long lasting ah uh, Disadvantage when it is not given in the right procedures, you can get side effects or allergies. Are you together? So, what of the advantages of passive? Advantages of breastfeeding. Advantage number one, it is already available. It is very cheap. Disadvantage, it can spread diseases. For example, if a mother suffering from AIDS does not take some drugs and her breastfeeds, always, always, always will get different diseases here. 
Let me continue and I look at uh, and I look at uh, the already made antibodies. What are the advantages? Do you see? It is short term, right? It is short term. That's an advantage. Antibodies work for a short period of time. The disadvantage here is it is actually it is actually not long lasting. Actually, ah, uh, uh, the disadvantage is long. It is a uh, short term. That is one. That is the disadvantage. But the advantage is it fast acting. Advantage is it is fast acting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my 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 person on camera. Do you have some questions? Uh, are there people following? Okay, that is nice. Those ones following, keep up. Let me actually proceed. Let me proceed. Uh, you know, these, these things, it requires a lot of data, it requires a lot of energy, it requires, uh, actually, the, it requires a lot of time to come up with such a discussion. But inshallah, we shall always overcome. Yeah, don't lose hope. I know uh, you guys are thinking of, uh, we are home, we are home, we are home. You know, the, the living God does not actually sleep. Will never sleep. Shift one is at, is at school. Soon, even before October, you might be called. It depends on your school. So when you say you lose hope and you don't study, now we we'll keep on discussing. Because I know the living God is actually thankful and some few are also thankful. So I always urge you guys, keep on doing what? Keep in touch. I want you to comment with questions. I'm done with the elite part. Now, I want to cross to what we call vaccines. Before immunization. I want to cross to what we call va vaccines. What is a vaccine? Now, a vaccine is a suspension which contains of either an attenuated or dead microorganisms that are designed to fight against diseases by producing antibodies that actually help to fight the diseases. Are we together? Is a suspension. Are we together? That contains of either weakened, we call it either weakened, stock attenuated. Or dead microorganisms that help the body to fight against diseases by stimulating the production of anti antibodies. Are we together? So suspension, dead, attenuated antibodies. Those three terms must be seen in the definition. So when you talk of vaccines, so I've got two types of vaccines. There are two types of vaccines. You have what you call the live and the dead. Live and dead vaccines. Uh, actually, when I look at uh, these live vaccines, what are they? These are types of vaccines that are made from living microorganisms, but they are weakened so they, they don't cause any harm to you. What of the dead? Those are types of vaccines that are made from the dead microorganisms that actually help to and actually, you as a medical personnel, you must know that uh, we, we, when we give you a vaccine in you, we don't give you that life one that will always cause harm to you. Are you together? That's why I'm talking of what we call attenuated, or what we call weakened. Eh? That is strong microbiology. But I know with the time, eh, you guys are enjoying these things. You guys are enjoying this things. So, what are some of the examples of vaccines that are alive? What are some of the vaccines that are dead? So, some of the examples of vaccines that are alive, we have what we call the B, C, G. Are you together? We have what we call the, the actually, the measles. The measles. B, C, G, and measles are those some, some examples of vaccines that are made from life. And actually, if I give a life example, these days we are having a, a serious disease called COVID. Yeah? So, COVID-19, uh, we, we, we got vaccines. That is uh, the AstraZeneca, Pfizer, we have uh, Johnson, we have a lot of vaccines. 
But these ones, some of them, what I know about them, some of them are made from dead and the other made from the live vaccine. So as I, as I was moving in town, I told someone I was vaccinated, he told me, ah, we got you, you have a kawuka. Go away, we're gonna tour us. I told him. But if you know microbiology, he would not speak like that. Because you know, for us, we know medical workers that it is attenuated, right? So if I proceed, what are some of the examples of uh, of a deadly vaccine? Some what called the DPT. Hmm? There are very many other vaccines. So uh, if we proceed, there are some other types of vaccines or other classification of vaccines. I've, I've heard of what you call the toxoid, the toxoid vaccines, and called the conjugated conjugated vaccines. These are other classes of vaccines. I'll not go deep in that, but what you call the toxoid, these are produced from the toxin that are produced by the microorganism. For example, if a bacteria comes to your body, for example, if COVID, the virus, comes to your body, the, the, the toxins it leaves, so we shall always make, so we shall always make the toxoid vaccine, this is the toxins itself. The conjugate, it is a, it is a, a combination of a lot of different things. So those are other classes. Eh? I will not go deep because actually we look at majorly two types at our level. So, you know, with this discussion, we always discuss these things. But I want you guys get these things by your head. And uh, the, like this topic, you are going to immunize until you die because you are going to be a medical worker until death. Are you together? So, having you seen that we have different types of vaccines, now we know what a vaccine is. We know the types of vaccines. We know uh, we know everything. Now let us look at uh, some important part uh, of what we call uh, vaccine storage. Hmm? Actually, the other subject topic under vaccines, what we call the V V M, and what we call the cold the cold chain. These are two under vaccines. Let me start with the VVM. VVM is what we call the vaccine virtual monitor. VVM, vaccine virtual Mo monitor. So, what is this? It's a heat. This is a heat and light sensitive level. Put on a vaccine to check for its effectiveness. What do we mean? Before you vaccinate a person, you always have to look at the VVM of each seed. Of each seed. Actually, the VVM that is put on the container. How do you read that VVM? We shall, as we actually, there is a question I saw They are saying describe the VVM. After you say the VVM is vaccine virtual monitor, which is a heat light sensitive label that is put on a vaccine to check for its sensitivity, you further go and say that uh, the VVM can be represented by a box and the, the circle. These are the standard shapes we use as we look at it, the VVM. So, when are we supposed to use a vaccine? When are we supposed to use a vaccine? It is seen here. So, when and how it is seen. Uh, when, when do we use? So, one, if the box is lighter than the circle, if the box is lighter than the circle, use. If the box is slightly darker, still do what? Use. When don't we use? I'm talking to medics now. Whom I believe, before you vaccinate a person, you must look at these two things the VVM and the cold chain. The VVM is the vaccine virtual monitor. Heat and light sensitive label put on the vaccine to check for it is effective. It is represented by a box. So, that is when we use. If the box is lighter than the circle, use. Slightly lighter, use. When don't we use? If the box is darker than the circle, don't. 
If the box is of the same color of the circle, don't. Roughly, having you understood what we call the VVM, make sure that always before you vaccinate a person, you check the VVM of a vaccine because it is a very important. Otherwise, you think that you have vaccinated a person, yet you have given him actually already a spoiled vaccine, which is not effective in the body. Let me now look at a cold chain. Cold chain. Because as I told you, there are three important things we always look at as we call out vaccination. VVM, VVM, and what you call the cold chain. Now I know what you call the VVM. Now with the cold chain, when someone talks of a cold chain, what is a cold chain? It's a system of storage. Just go slowly. It's a system of storage and the distribution and the distribution of vaccines at a constant temperature of plus 2 degrees Celsius to plus 8 degrees Celsius when it's in its potent potent condition until the last recipient gets it. I'm getting back. Those things must be seen in this definition. Cold chain is a system of distribution and storage of vaccines at a specific temperature of plus two to plus eight degrees Celsius to the final to the final or last recipient when it's still in its potent condition. That's what you call a cold chain. What are some of the requirements needed in order to maintain a cold chain? We need what you call a refrigerator. A refrigerator. And this refrigerator is, is actually found at every regional center which carries out vaccination. And the refrigerator, we shall see that uh, we have some types of vaccines and the refrigerator that are put down on the, the, the colder part and others that are put on the cooler part. There is a reason as to why it is seen. I want you to go as an assignment, look at that structure of the refrigerator. And the refrigerator, we always put what we call a fridge tag or a thermometer to monitor this temperature. Are you together? So, as vaccines are brought from abroad, they always come in their potent stage. We must maintain them in their potent stage. You can also use what we call, what we call, uh, the what you call vaccination boxes. Eh? Those boxes, you always see nurses move with those boxes. And they also, they also keep, have what you call ice packs in them, which ice packs help keep these things in at least that temperature. Are you together? One thing you always look at, under the refrigerator, that keeps vaccines. We shall see that uh, under this refrigerator, we have, uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, it is, it, it is like this. It is, refrigerator is like this. The one that keeps vaccines. One thing you must know, that down here, we, there are some types of vaccines put here. For example, let me actually give you a, we have, we put a DPT down. There is a reason. We put the BCG, BCG and the measles up. Here, we shall put what we call dalliants. Dalliant, eh? measles and BCG dalliants. Those are, those are the, what, that, that water we use to mix the vaccines is put in the middle. Go and check it. So, after looking at, uh, after looking at uh, the cold chain, what you call the cold chain, uh, what are some of the things that must be looked at? What are some of the things that must be looked at as uh, actually as we as we look at immunization? There are some important steps you must always look at as we carry out immunization. That means having to have vaccines. Now I want to look at it, immunization. I believe uh, I have left out anything. I have not left out anything with uh, immunity so far. Now with vaccines. Have I left out anything with vaccines? Before I cross to the last part, 
Uh, let me see if I've not left, left out anything. In a uh, actually, ah, uh, here comes an important part. In a uh, in a uh, yeah, here are uh, under the items needed in maintaining the cold chain. We have refrigerator. We have uh, we have the cold boxes. We have uh, the vaccine carriers. We have the, the we have the registered houses. Eh? Afri they are called uh, refrigerated houses. Yeah. So I believe you have actually seen everything about vaccines and immunity. So allow me now cross over to yet another important interesting part called immunization. What is immunization? Introduction of actually of actually improved or what we call is the introduction of, of actually standard or improved chemicals into the body that will always help to fight against diseases by producing the slowly conversion of antibodies. That, that is the act of immunization. We are now looking at immunization. Now, with this part, we are, we are, we are trying to finalize. I don't know how long you guys uh, we will actually take to get these things, but they are quite simple things. Do you have any question? You don't have any question. Okay. So, with the immunization, you know that, that process of, you know, of actually injecting those chemicals into your body, that they produce antibodies that fight against disease, that we call immunization. What are some of the immunizable diseases we look at? Diseases we look at. We have what we call polio. We have what you call measles, have what you call tuberculosis, we have what you call COVID. Actually, it must be number one. We have what you call hepatitis. We have what you call the rhibella. We have what we call uh, we have what we call hepatitis B. Actually, hepatitis is divided into other types. We have B, C, and whatsoever. There are so many other types of hepatitis. We have tuberculosis, diphtheria. There are very many diseases we look at under immunization. Having known the diseases, we look at now what are some of the things that must be taken conscious of as we cut out precautions. The precautions as we cut out immunization. Precaution number one always use the needle once as, as you are cutting out immunization. Use the needle once. These things are, must be on your fingertips. Check the VVM. Check the cold chain of the vaccine. Always, whenever you get a chance to immunize, do that. Take it. Whenever you get a time, a chance to immunize, immunize. Are we together? And, and actually, these precautions are those things you must follow as you carry out immunization. Are we together? You must always be careful with these precautions. A standard person must check the VVM before vaccinating. Must use the needle once. Must mix appropriate vaccines. Must actually immunize at the right side. At the right side. Eh? You find someone giving DPT here. You laugh. Even you wonder the problem with that one. Eh? You find someone actually uh, actually checking the VVM when when the box is the same with the circle, then he gives the vaccine. Then are you are you a medic? You just want to kill people. Let me proceed. Having looked at the precautions, because they are very many, I cannot complete them. I just try to beat a bit. Eh? So with uh, let us now look at what we call the what we call the indications. Who are those people supposed to be? The indications of indications, the indications of immunization. Who are those people supposed to be vaccinated? Babies at birth. Babies at birth. In the case of a pandemic, in the case of a pandemic, like now, you can vaccinate. Uh, you can also vaccinate in the case of any other epidemic outbreak. 
Those are some of the indications. What are some of what you call the contract? Contract. So when you hear this word contra indication, it means when and we supposed to vaccinate. Contra indication ah, when a person is suffering from a particular disease, you have COVID. No need of you to be vaccinated. It's the same reason as to why you very many Ugandans. We lost very many Ugandans in the second wave. They were vaccinated. I don't know even those people who actually carry out the vaccination, whether they were actually having brains. How can you vaccinate a person without checking him or administering whether he has a, a, that type of disease or not? Those people were vaccinated without checking them. And actually, that's why we lost out of them. And let us be a changed medical society. Let us have a changed medical world. It is, let, it, let it start with us, not the other all the fashion people. Still, I'm not actually blaming them because we are on panic about the disease. But that is the same as why we lost out of people. They were vaccinated before being checked. Hence, losing a lot of lives. Never vaccinate. Contraindication number one. Never vaccinate a person suffering from a disease or having any fever. Don't. In actual, it's the major contraindication. I'm, I'm not adding anything. Yeah. Other contraindication. If you have COVID, don't be vaccinated because the body having no immunity. Now the body will have produced antibodies. If you get healed, you are fine. Now you have antibodies. Why? Why is the need of you being actually vaccinated? No need. Yeah? No need. <laughs> there is no need. Actually, having looked at that at this juncture, I want to give an assignment for you guys. The assignment is very simple. Assignment is very simple. I want you to go and look at what you call the immunization schedule. When someone talks of immunization schedule, what does he mean? What do I mean? I want you to go and look at that schedule and look at that graphical or table representation of how immunization, how vaccines are given to babies. In a tabular form, and you get to know where should we give BCG at what time, in what amount, is what we talk about under the assignment. I believe you guys are very conscious about this. Go check it. This must be part of your lives. Uh, before, we pro before we actually conclude, let me believe I've left out nothing under this topic. Uh, I think I've left out nothing. The best I can always tell you is that uh, for reference of whatever I've talked about and I mean it, go to anatomy and physiology and check the topic called resistance and immunity. You will get more knowledge though it's not organized in anatomy like the way I've presented it. But you will get more information in this. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has been actually live today. I promise to, to actually keep on doing this, but I just want to urge you guys, stay, stay focused. Martin Mulonda is my name for God and my country.